What's up guys, welcome to a new video. So now that we have a, have our new Cycle Talk Northeast YouTube channel, so please make sure that you go down, subscribe and like and share. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do a video on a Wednesday evening where we will publish something about the pro cycling teams and stats of 2021. So for 2021, we do have a few new riders moving to some different teams. But first, I would like to kick off a question about the pro teams. So my question is, what do you think your best pro team kit is? So that could be Ineos's, could be Israel's, could be Trexic Fredo's, could be um, Quick Steps, could be anyone. Absolutely anyone within the cycling. Personally, my favourite team and cycling pro kit is the new um, new Quick Steps uh, new kit. So now that we have their new kit out, um, I would like to see that on the road. I'd like to see how well the riders um, like the kit. I'd like to have a review on their kit as well. But now that we have seen their all new kit, we do have one kit as well. What is my least favourite? So my least favourite is the new AG2R Citroen's kit. I think people might agree with me, some people might not, some people like them, we all have a totally different opinion. But personally I think their kit is not the best, I thought their kit last year was absolutely amazing, I thought it was absolutely mega, it looked brilliant on the riders. But now that they are sponsored by Citroen, uh, they have chosen a colour code which I don't think personally matches. But we all have opinions, we all like to have an opinion, but that is mine. So moving on, so my uh, other question is, and what I want to share with you is, what do you think people's intentions are for 2021 for a rider? So that could be Chris Room, that could be Cavendish, that could be Andre Greipel, that could be Greg Van Avermaet, it could be anyone. So what do you want to see from their riding for 2021? So... Now that we've seen that Chris Room has moved to Israel Cycling, now that I've seen that, I'm thinking that Chris Room might not have much left within the cycling career. With him being with Ineos and Team Sky for the last 11 years, and winning four Tour de France's and winning two times Giro and Vuelta uh, España, so I would like to see Chris Room at least have one more win in him, if he can. Um, I'm not sure if that he could uh, with with where he's at now, but hopefully he can. Also, he is a two times Olympic gold medalist, which is absolutely outstanding. Like that could that is the best that you can probably get. Also, that we have seen Cavendish has gone back to his old team of Quick Step, which is mm, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty pretty good that he's he's gone back there um, with his old team. Um, by Ray McLaren, I didn't think he had much opportunities there, I didn't think he was getting into races, I didn't think he was getting what he had with all of his intentions, what he wanted for 2020, um, he, he just, I didn't think he'd get it. Also from Dimension Data, he was there for quite a while, which is which is pretty good that he was there for, for a fair long time, they renewed his contract a, a few times as well, which is brilliant, so that, that shows he was, he was improving at... Um, dimension data. But now what I would like to do is just extend this video more to Patrick where he'll be explaining more about the CX side of uh, the cycling within the pro stats. Thank you Owen, uh, I agree, it was a great move by Mark Cavendish to go back to quick step. Um, so we've got quite a lot of cyclocross news to catch up on, uh, season got off to quite a slow start with 14 events being reduced to just five in the World Cup series. Events were cancelled from the start of October until the end of November. Um, when it finally kicked off in Tabor in the Czech Republic, Zoe Backstead took the first ever junior women World Cup race at only age 16. And local boy Thomas Main took the under-23 win, which, is, which was his first World Cup win. Then, after another cancelled event, um, it kicked off again with a little back and forth between Matthew van der Poel and Wout van Aert, with Matthew van der Poel taking the win after missing round one, Wout van Aert taking stage three in Dendermond, Belgium, and then van der Poel taking a win in the Netherlands. 
the standings are as below. Uh, Zoe Backstead leads the juniors into the second and final junior round. Thomas Mean leads the under-23s into the second and last round. And the positioning in the elite men is quite tight, with Wout Van Aert on 125 points, Matthew Van Der Poel on 110, and Michael Van Darenhout on 106 points. Tom Pidcock is in 8th after two-thirds, not in contest for the win, but a great performance by him. And then all of the riders will be heading towards Ostend for the World Champs following the final round of the World Cup. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook, and follow our Instagram. This has been the Cycling News. Thank you.